This week, we're crossing the bridges over the Little Kanawha River on the Cumberland and Ohio Valley Railroad. Welcome back everybody. It's been three weeks since the last vlog and in that amount of time I have gotten quite a bit accomplished. The river scene is now complete. Last night I actually got the truss bridge finished which was really the final element to bring the whole scene together. But we're going to take a close look today at some of the water features and scenery and even do a little demo for you but uh i hope you will agree that this really has turned out to be what i think will end up being a signature scene on the layout it exceeded my expectations that's for sure so it is it's been something that's taken a lot of hours during those three weeks of course i I'm off during the summer being a teacher, so I've been, those three weeks have been a lot of eight and nine hour days to get this accomplished, but it really, it really came together quite nicely. So let's, uh, let's start over at this end. <clears throat> and, uh, this was pretty much all plaster cloth last time you came. In fact, this is the section that we, that we did together. Um, since then, I finished the road. I made a grade crossing just out of uh, cross ties and added the cross bucks and the guardrails. Both of those are uh, available from Pike Stuff. And I did in fact use that Woodland Scenics roadbed sheet for the uh, road. I have to say I really like that. I'm, I probably am going to use that fairly extensively on the layout because it's it's easy to cut, it's easy to shape. You can contour it to any grade or uh, valley. I mean, it just bends really easy. It takes paint well. There's a, there's just, it's just a nice material to work with. And I'm a little bit of weathering there to bring it together. And you can see there's all kinds of little weeds. I'm probably going to do just a standalone demo on how I do all of the weeds, but basically in a nutshell, it is super tree material, which is what these are. Um, and these are just basically small scrap pieces that come off of it um, for the weeds. There's some back in here as well. But the key to this to me is to not use what is typically used for trees, and that's the Woodland Scenics uh, foam, the uh, turf material. Uh, doesn't have a lot of texture to it. It's, it's kind of sandy and, and just kind of seems to be a little flat. But as you can see in the up close shots here, you get the impression of individual leaves. And for that, I use a material that is produced by Knock, and it's basically just glorified confetti. It's some sort of shredded paper material, but of course it comes in different colors, as you can see here, but boy, it really captures the look of individual leaves. And this is just a matter of just covering the little super tree armatures with hairspray, just good, cheap, a lot of lacquer hairspray and then just sprinkling on the leaf material uh, and shaking most of it off. 
that's that's another critical thing is you don't want it to just be gobbed with leaves. The more transparent and see-through and sort of lacy it is, the more realistic it looks to me. But I'll do a little uh, tutorial on how I actually do the trees, but um, that's that really brought that in together. And as you can see, I did make my piers out of the foam. Show you a couple of them here. And these I cut on my hot wire table. That, that's another tutorial that I'd like to do. Uh, but these were just covered with a spackle material, uh, some sort of joint compound, and then just sanded smooth and then weathered. But this was a unique uh, area here because these this bridge and the way that they're sort of uh, at odd angles with each other and the height that's involved, there just weren't any commercially available piers. So I was pretty much forced to make my own, but I think they turned out nice. There's a lot of, as you can see, there's different bridges here that are lined up which connect at different heights. So I had to make some unusual uh, blocks at the top here to connect the different heights, which is, you know, common on bridges. You see the one underneath there. Um, but I think they turned out quite well. Uh, we've got uh, a Walters Bridge, a Central Valley, and then some more Walters Bridges here. And uh, as much as I like structures and structure building, you know, there are there are kits on the market that I would categorize as being unpleasant to build. Uh, this bridge would probably fall into that category because literally every piece has to be cut to size and trimmed and mitered and uh, just, you know, it's just not my personal thing. Uh, I like building kits, but I don't like having to do so much filing and fitting and there was just a lot of it to that kit but you know it turned out really nice i'm super happy with it the the pain was worth the gain to be sure um but those go together quite well of course these are all walters on the bottom here but the big big thing to show you is the water and i'm really really pleased with how the water turned out I used actually four different materials to do the uh, water. Uh, there's, as you can see, there's, if I can get back in here a little bit, there's some deeper water at the bottom of the falls and also at the front of the layout here. And for those, I used Envirotex, which everyone has been using forever. Uh, the problem with the in-between part here is it's on a slope, and Envirotex will absolutely find any unlevel uh, base and accumulate at the end that's at the lowest point. And I would have had a floor full of Envirotex if I poured it over the whole thing. So I strictly poured the back part and the front as, as two separate pours, and then in between with all the rocks, I used a different material, which is gloss medium, which is an art art uh, substance that is kind of like a, a milky, creamy uh, coating, clear coat that dries uh, in a glossy finish. And that's what was used to pour over here. And to get the waves, I used another uh, acrylic medium, which is called gel medium. And the difference with that is you can actually build up the waves and get a little bit of uh, thickness to them where the other stuff is creamy and it also sort of finds its own level. But the gel medium, you can actually, it's almost the consistency of um, pudding or yogurt. So it's, you, you make a little pyramid with it or a little choppy wave uh, sort of a configuration. It'll, it'll hold its shape. But again, it dries clear. And as you can see, I have a lot of white water in here. So to achieve that, 
I actually mixed a little bit of white acrylic paint, craft paint, just inexpensive uh, craft paint you can get at Walmart, and sort of made a palette and would stipple a little bit of white paint with the gel medium together, and that way when it dries, it keeps the white color because in that situation, I actually wanted it to, to stay white. Um, and then other places, like right right in here, I would just dry brush a little bit of white uh, to sort of create the foam and the froth and the area where the, where the, the moving water sort of dissipates. But I am extremely pleased with how it all turned out. You see I got a couple of couple of fishermen there. The the one that's wearing waders, I actually put him in and then poured the resin and Viratex around him so he's actually down in there versus having his legs cut off, which is a little gruesome. And then I have some canoes that are going by and you'll see that I also put a little bit of wake behind the canoes to give it a little impression of movement and even a little bit where they're dipping their oars in the water. Just a little detail. Uh, but you can see up close on this water, it also has a little bit of texture to it, and that's where the gloss medium came in handy. But it's still got some clear depth. You can see some rocks down in there through the Envirotex, but um, I didn't want it to be just glossy smooth, so... Uh, mirror smooth so it's got that little bit of gloss medium on there to give it a little bit of ripple but the waves over the uh, or I should say the water coming over the fall the cascades that was a different process this I actually made with silicon gel and just like you get in a tube for a caulking gun and that's what I made the water coming over this rock embankment and this is actually where I started out and let me show you uh, at the table over here my method for making this moving water so these are the materials that I use to actually make the water features as I mentioned here's the gloss medium and the gel medium they're both by Liquitex I tell you, these things last forever. This jar right here is probably 12 years old and it's still, it's still perfectly good. So it lasts a long time. But this is the material I use to make the actual waterfalls. Uh, it's a clear, flexible sealer uh, that is made by DAP and Apparently it's not an actual silicone material because the label says clearer than silicone. So uh, I guess this is some other type of material, but basically it, it applies the same way. So let me show you how I actually make the wave. Okay, so what we're going to start with is a piece of glass. And I just bought a very inexpensive picture frame just basically for the glass. I think it's 11 by 17 because I wanted a little more room than an 8 by 10 frame would have. And what we're going to do is take our, uh, we'll just keep calling it silicone even though it says it's not, take our silicone material and what I'm going to do is just lay several beads in a straight line, just parallel to each other. Very simple. They don't have to touch. They do need to be pretty close together, but it's not it's not necessary that they actually touch one another. Okay, and that'll for our demo that will be plenty. Now this is the key because we need to actually make this look like moving water. So this was kind of my own little technique that I came up with. I created this little tool and all I did was just take uh, about 10 toothpicks and lined them up and just wrapped them with a piece of masking tape. 
and this is going to be our wave making tool. So what I'm going to do is start at the top and I'm just going to use it to drag down these lines of silicone. So we're going to go perpendicular to the stripes. So I'll just start here and this stuff's pretty thick and pretty tacky so you're going to want to press down pretty hard but as you can see all those spaces in between the lines have filled in so it didn't matter that they were right up against each other. And it's almost like you're combing this, uh, this gel here. Let me see if I can give you a better shot. Of course, it's going to be coming down this way. But you can see the lines in it, but I want it to even be a little better than this. So what I found is if I keep doing it over and over again, what's going to happen is I'm, parts of this are going to start to ball up on me. And that's a good thing because it actually looks like drips of water that are coming down the falls versus everything just being strictly straight lines. It kind of gives a little bit of uh, texture and relief so it's a little more three-dimensional. So I'm just kind of teasing it right now more than anything else, kind of picking at it so that it has a little more a little more texture. And that's really, all. Oh, that's the secret to the whole thing right there. Of course, if I were doing a, a, a longer falls, I would, you know, do the number of beads of silicone I needed to actually fit my particular area. Let's see if I can lift this up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. Now, you can see where all of the little sort of blobs of silicone like here's a here's a good one right here here's some more they actually sort of look like you took a snapshot of falling water because you know as it goes over it's not falling in just a constant steady flow it's got especially if you've got a lot of rocks underneath it like mine does uh, you're gonna have little places where it's gonna sort of gather up and ball up and and look irregular and that's 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 the look we're going for, is this irregular uh, strips, strings of, of silicone. But hopefully you can see right there, that, that actually looks sort of like moving water. Just envision that over some rock castings. And uh, you can see how that uh, would look very realistic. Um, and this will stay tacky for... Stuff takes a little while to dry, actually. I would say leave it overnight, wait about 12, 12 hours or so, and then it should be cured enough that you can pull it off of the glass. And I found that I didn't even need a razor blade or anything to pull it up. It actually, once you use your fingernails and start teasing up the top of it, it'll pretty much pull off in one piece. Now it's very, very flexible, and as you pull it, it's gonna stretch, um, but it'll retain its shape. As soon as you get it all up, it'll go back into what it was originally, but it's it's got a lot of elasticity when you, when you pull this off of here. But that's a good thing, because you can use that to match the contours of the rocks and things as you go. Um, but that's the secret. Uh, so let's go back and we'll take a look at the finished falls. So once you peel that up, then you just cut it and shape it over the rocks here. And I just found places that were just natural openings in the rocks where water would naturally be able to move through. And one other thing I did, once I put the silicon water over the rocks, I put a little of the gloss medium on there to make it a little sticky. And I put little pieces of cotton. I'm going to see if I can find some where I can, where it's a little evident here. Right in here, you can see a little bit of it. Basically what I did was put that cotton in there. It was already stretched pretty thin. And then I just left it in there and let the gel dry. And once it dried, then I came back with tweezers and pulled out most of it. 
And what that did was just leave a little fine fuzz. See a little of it right there too. And that gives the impression of spray and mist that's coming up from the, the water moving. And there's some down at the bottom also. Unfortunately, the bridges block a lot of the part that looks really good back here. I put a lot of time, of course I did this with the bridges out, but a lot of time was taken to get this just right in the back and then, you know, it's one of those things where I've covered up most of it. But also highlighted a little bit with dry brushing some white acrylic at the very end, but um, from a distance, you know, about a foot back, it really, it really has a nice look to it. And then coming over with the white water here, I think really makes a very dramatic, very dramatic scene. So this water is going to continue around here. And then it will connect over underneath this trestle and once it gets over here it's going to be pretty still I'll, I'll do a little bit of gloss medium ripples on the water but it's not going to be white water by any means on that side it's going to be fairly fairly smooth and still and then on this other bank we also added trees here uh, i ran out of super tree material i have a few more trees to put right in here and a couple more to put right up in here. But I had to stop the hill here because beyond that is going to be the Varingold Tannery, which is a fine scale kit, um, one of my favorites. And it will kind of see where I have the footprint of the diorama penciled off there. So there'll be some sort of a transition between the edge of that hill where it starts to connect into the uh, into the structure. So I just cut it off right there for now. Uh, I plan on just working around this away with the mine being the next area and then the lumber mill being the last on this side. And the reason for that is I've got this kit already built and these uh, being pretty much plastic Walther's kits uh, will go together pretty quickly. So this whole area should progress very, very fast. I'm hoping that I can have all of this done by Thanksgiving at the very latest, um, probably even earlier than that. Um, but going back to school, I won't have the time to invest in it that I have with, with this getting it done. And basically this took from beginning to end from foam going in to this, this stage was five weeks total. So considering the amount of, uh, vegetation detail, there's not really what you'd call detail as far as castings of tires and barrels and uh, oil drums and that type of thing, but there's it's a lot of weeds and a lot of undergrowth and that that takes a lot of time also um, But still I think five weeks was pretty good to get all of that done Considering that I had to build that truss bridge in there But this area right here is going to be so many craftsman kits. It's going to be very slow going so I think I get more bang for the buck if I work around the other way and then come back over there later. So I just wanted to be able to share what I've gotten done so far with you. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Click the notification box so you'll know when I have new content uploaded. Like I said, I plan to do some tutorials, one on trees, and uh, I may even just do at some point a mock-up little little mini tutorial diorama of a water feature like this to show exactly how I did the whole thing. So look for that as well because that may be coming up. This weekend um, 
is my last weekend of summer uh, that's coming up and we're planning right now to have an op session. It'll be the fourth session, so I may actually try to film a little bit of that for you while we're at it, but at the very least I'll have some new photos of, of our uh, fourth op session with the guys coming over. So excited about that as well. But uh, hope you enjoyed your visit today. Hope everyone is doing well, staying well. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on our next visit. Take care, everyone.